introductions right away. And on uh, Fong, I'll be manning the trigger for letting people in and stuff like that. So you don't have to worry about policing it as well. I'll make sure to add Paul as a co-host too, just so he can keep an eye on that as well. And otherwise we are gonna get going. All right, and there we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are now live at a Syndicate Talks. Unlock the book inside of you. We are in season two of Syndicate Talks, and we're about three quarters of the way through the season itself. Of course, I am your host, Mitch Kamich. Mitch Kamich, coaching the savage in business, and I'm here to give you one important gift, the best gift that we can give everybody in business in the world, free education. Syndicate, the organization that started this, we are an organization of like-minded business owners, a collection, a tribe of people that are willing to share resources, ideas, and suggestions, make themselves, their own businesses, the other businesses around them, and the world in general a little better than it was the day before. We do that by coming together, collaborating, and of course, in the midst of the situation we find ourselves right now, by doing the best thing we can do, taking the things that we are good at, sharing them with other people, of course, we'd like to get paid, but past that, making sure that other people don't have the same struggles to get to the point that we are at, and that is our gift to you. With that in mind, here is my co-host, our primary speaker, the man of the hour, Mr. Fong Shua. He is a friend of mine. He is a member of Syndicate, and of course, he is a certifiable badass in business. He is a business strategist, author, and coach. The guy speaks on stages all over the world, digitally, physically as well. He knows some movers and shakers. And if you're not watching his podcast or you're not watching Mind Bites, you need to get focused because this man is sharing critical thinking, critical performance, critical level up, and critical business information on a daily and sometimes even an hourly basis. And today he's going to be talking to you about doing something that we all love to do. Now, old statistics suggest, before I say exactly what it is, even though you can see Unlock the Book inside of you, and chances are you're here because you want to write a book. Old statistics suggested that for every 10,000 books that somebody began to author, only one would be completed. That is a staggeringly high amount of people that lost hope while doing something where they hoped it would allow them to share something they were passionate about, stories that would entertain and inspire, or otherwise to be able to educate. And with that, my good friend, Fong Shua. Fong, thank you very much for coming on, brother. It's a pleasure to host you on Syndicate Talks. And of course, everything I can do, I will be here to help. The floor is now yours. Awesome. Thank you very much, Mitch, for uh, giving me this platform to share some, some value and also share some of my, my expertise, everybody. And also thank you, everybody else here for tuning in. Uh, this is something I love to do is to impact as many people as I can and also to share information that I can to help other people with. So thank you very much for being here. So as everybody knows, you are here to learn how to get that book that's locked inside of you to come right back out and uh, become that, that branding tool, become that credibility tool for you. Uh, just a very quick kind of introduction as to who I am. Everybody can see my screen now. So who am I? I'm a I'm a uh, business strategist, entrepreneur, a real estate investors coach, and also a best-selling author. Um, I publish over four, five books right now. I have another three more books coming out in the next two, three months. Uh, I have been speaking on stages in the U.S., throughout Canada, and to people, to wealth conferences of over 2,500 people. And that's something I love doing in the last uh, few years here. I have a YouTube show called the Make More Mind Bites weekly, and then also a podcast that goes out weekly where I've been able to interview some amazing people. Uh, Mark McCoy is an Olympic champion, uh, Jillian Michaels, and also I had Kevin Smith as a Q&A before. And I've done over, like, I've done businesses in, with lots of different people. I'm a money lender. I have real estate. I help people expand their credibility and exposure in their businesses. And I like throwing this out there because uh, who here knows about the Dopey Challenge? Well, if anybody ever wants to challenge themselves to run a marathon, the easiest one is in Disney World. And why is it called the Dopey Challenge? Uh, that's because on Thursday morning, you run a 5K 
a Friday morning, you run a 10K. Then on Saturday morning, you run a half marathon. And on Sunday morning, you run a full marathon. So you do all four in four days. And why am I saying it's the easiest? Because there's 28,000 people there and you get to go through the entire park and run through all of Disney World and meet different people. And it's a lot of fun. And that marathon goes by in a flash. Uh, what I love doing is helping people find their passions, unlocking the potentials, and then adding value as much as I can. So why are we talking about writing books? Uh, the reason why is I usually ask the question, do you have a message to share? And I believe every single person has a message to share and has something to add, has expertise to give, has advice to share with their family, their friends, their followers, their clientele. Um, book writing is one of the best ways to increase your credibility instantly and also gets people to turn their heads and notice you first. Um, it lets you build your brand and also get people to think of you first instead of somebody else. Uh, if there's two people who's doing the exact same thing, but you have a book in hand and you're able to showcase that book, then you're gonna get that recognition first and get your foot in the door first. And then also I ask people, who do you know that has written a book? So aside from me right now, who else do you know that has written a book? And then you'll probably say a few names. Well, who do you know that's written two books, three books, four books? Well, as the number of books goes higher, then you start thinking of names that get smaller and smaller, and those names are getting more credible and more credible. So once you start introducing yourself as a person who's written a book and has written multiple books, then people start putting you in the same category. So people start remembering you. People start coming up to you for advice and start coming up to you to get to know you a little bit better. Now, the type of book I'm talking about, uh, you're not looking at the book as something uh, that's going to make you rich. You're making the book as a credibility tool. You want people to think of you first once they know that, hey, you have the book on something and you're an expert in something. Uh, what the eventual goal is, is for people to go, wow, this person's written the book on this. I want to hire that person and work with them specifically. So more likely than not, all the books that you give away, all the books that you've sold, people may or may not even be reading that book. So the thing is, you want to have that book in their hands. You want to have that book as a credibility tool and get noticed. Now, if people do actually read it, you still want that book to be of high quality and professional so it doesn't ruin your reputation when you have it out there. So once again, the book builds your credibility, gives you the, uh, the authority of that area, makes you the expert. Now, it also makes you stand out, as I said before. It's like a glorified business card. How many people here has a stack of business cards in their room that you're waiting to throw out? How many people here has gone to networking events when we could go to networking events and got a whole bunch of business cards and then once you got home, you go, I don't remember this person. And you don't know where that person was from. You don't know what they do. All they do is have is their name and no photo. Well, what if somebody came up to you and go, oh, here's a, a copy of a book that I wrote and I hope to get in touch with you. I'm pretty sure you'll remember that person. And I'm pretty sure that it's very unlikely that you're gonna throw that book away. You'll probably give that book away to somebody else before you actually throw it out. And that's what the, the power of having a book is. Uh, it also creates relevancy. Uh, that's why a lot of celebrities keep on writing books is so that they get interviews and goes on talk shows, goes on radio, so they can talk about themselves a bit more and also promote their books. Uh, it opens up a platform for you. For instance, I've been able to speak on multiple stages. I've been asked to speak on virtual events. Uh, I've been asked to be interviewed on different podcasts throughout the world. Uh, the image there is a podcast in South Africa. I've been interviewed in Australia and also Singapore and also throughout the States as well. Uh, a few of my clients, uh, Arjun here has written his book and got asked to speak at a college for a breakout session to talk about how do you smile your way to success and how do you build your mindset for success. Uh, Odie and Welsh here, she wrote her book on her life story that focuses on mental health. And during her book launch, she was able to raise thousands of dollars for a uh, local charity and then also got recognition and got interviewed on CTV. Uh, Abraham here was one of my clients that I challenged to finish his book in three months. He completed it in three months, and right after he finished that book, he got asked to speak on a virtual conference that was hosted in Paris 
and also in Ghana. And then Von Eric here, after he finished his book in also four, three months. Did I say three weeks before? I meant three months. Anyway, uh, Von here finished his book in three months and he got recognition in the papers, got asked to speak on a lot of podcast interviews and also got asked to speak at a writer's symposium. So all these people got higher credibility, got asked to be on stages, got asked to do a lot of different speaking engagements. And also I've watched their confidence levels go up as they, as they were writing their books and when they got their books on paper. So a lot of people are asking, well, I'm not a type of person who is going to be doing uh, consulting or coaching. I'm not the person that's going to have my own business. So why do I need a, a book? Well, I recommend having a book for everybody because it sets you up for your own personal brand as well. Imagine that if you're a plumber and another plumber has exact same expertise as you, but on your website, you promote that you have a best-selling book on what plumbers don't share with you or what plumbers are actually hiding from you. You'll separate yourself from the other plumber and you'll probably get more, um, more leads because of that. Uh, imagine going to an interview process where you can go, oh, I wrote the book on this. You'll get, your, your, you'll get more memorability and also uh, you'll stand out over all the other applicants. In fact, one of my clients put down on their resume and on their cover letter saying that, oh, by the way, I wrote the best-selling uh, book on, on, on champion speakers, and I'll bring a signed copy when I come in for my interview. He didn't even get the call yet, and he wrote that in, he sent it in, and sure enough, he got an interview. So it really sets you up for success and also sets you up for more opportunities to get noticed and get interviews and get also uh, recognition from other people. Now, having said that, the next question I usually get and what I was struggling with was, who am I to write a book? That person there is more successful than me. That person's not gonna read my book. Why am I writing this book? It's gonna to be too hard. Well, first of all, for the person who's not reading a book, who cares? If that person is not reading your book, that is not somebody that's within your target market and focus on all the people that want to hear what you have to say and want to see what you're gonna be writing. And for the other thing about your credibility and why you should write a book or how to write that book, well, for myself, uh, my coach came up to me and said, over the last 100 years, nothing new has been written, but your voice has not been heard. And people are waiting to hear it from your voice. Now, I may or may not be able to reach your clientele, your followers, your fan base. And therefore, every single moment that you're not writing that book, spreading your message is every single moment that you're depriving your fans, your clientele, your followers, that message and that expertise. All of us here have spoken on stages, all of us here have spoken to a group of individuals. If you can stand up in front of people to speak, then you have every right to write that book. And after my coach told me that, that's how I went from zero books all the way up to five books and counting. That completely changed my life and allowed me to gain more confidence to write those books and focus on the people that would actually listen to me and want to see what I have to say. So throughout this session here, I'm gonna go through all the items that you need for your book, how you're gonna be doing it. And my goal is after this session, you'll, be a ha you'll have all the tools that you need to get that book done and you're well on your way. So we'll go through the title, the subtitle, the length of the book, how do you create an outline, how do you complete your book in record time? Um, how to prevent writer's block? Uh, details about the cover, the editing, the website, uh, testimonials and forwards, the bonuses, if you wanna have bonuses throughout your book, uh, the bestseller strategy, uh, the whole process about proofing and, and printing. And then also details about the book launch itself, uh, your, how to get your book completely paid for before you even write the first word. Uh, some social media content, how to use it as lead gen, and also repurposing your book so that you're intentional congruence with everything else that you do in your business. So with that, I have somebody here, uh, Paul, who has so graciously volunteered to be my, my uh, guinea pig here to go through this whole segment. So thank you, Paul, for, for volunteering and uh, subjecting yourself with some questions. 
So first of all, uh, uh, just to lay this out at the beginning, I, I've talked to Paul for for about 30 minutes before, and we kind of know about what each other person does, but we haven't gone through this whole book process. So for everybody else who is online right now, uh, could you share with us what exactly that you do? Uh, how do you help people? And what exactly do you want people to know you for as a brand and an expertise? Um, my background is in banking and I've been in real estate investing since, uh, since 2000. Um, and now I'm in the uh, branching out into the real estate coaching um, area as well as business coaching. So um, I'm hoping to um, not only just expand my audience, but uh, share my experiences of, of uh, you know, my mistakes that I made throughout my journey so that others don't make the same, same mistakes that I did. So from a book perspective, uh, what would you like the book to brand you as? From, uh, as a real estate investor and expert or a coaching expert? Uh, more on the real estate side, for sure. And I've, from a perspective of what? Uh, new investors who wants to learn how to do real estate? Uh, yeah, that would be, that would be a, a great way to, to start a book is, is to provide those, uh, you know, those hints and tips um, and the knowledge that, uh, that I've gained through uh, different markets, for sure. So somebody that's entering the market that's brand new or somebody that has you know, a handful of properties and, and now they're, they're, they're running into you know, certain issues with, with tenants or the other one is uh, a lack of money um, to, to acquire more. Okay, great. There'll be more questions on the, on the, on the, on the way. Uh, There's probably so a couple of books. <laughs> you know, sure. There could be one just on landlording and there could be one just on raising capital, I guess. Right. So. Well, you, one on, on actual real estate and then one. Yeah. So that's three books already. You're, you're already on your way. <laughs> uh, so a little bit of details on regards to the title, the subtitles and the length. Uh, when we're looking at writing a book, your title should be a right brain mentality that attracts attention. So right off the bat, if I'm thinking of a, a title for your book on real estate, it might be cash flow to free flow. So free flow meaning, hey, you get to live the life of freedom and you get to uh, go with the flow. So how do you convert from cash flow all the way up to that? And then uh, with the subtitle, which, we, which we would be a left brain mentality, explaining every step of the way of how to actually do it. Um, something for your book would probably be something like, uh, the step-by-step -step process of how to start in real estate and create the financial freedom. Okay. Okay. So we could brainstorm some more about the book titles, but when we're talking about book titles, we want something that, that's attention grabbing. Um, recently, I had a client that said, here's my book title. In the, uh, the eyes behind the adult, no, uh, the story be behind the adult through a child's eyes when it comes to depression, anxiety, and all that. It was like a very, very long mouthful title. And in the end, I go, why don't we just change it and call it Behind the Curtains? And then use that title as your subtitle that explains exactly what you're going to be talking about. Okay. So for your book right now, let's say that that's going to be our title, which is Cash Flow to Free Flow. And then the step-by-step -step process of building real estate so that you can live a financial freedom. Okay. Now, with regards to the book length, we want somewhere between 75 pages to about 150 pages. Anything, to, anything more than that would be overwhelming for somebody to actually read at, as the first book. And also anything less than 75 pages will look like a glorified pamphlet. So we want it within that 75 to 150. And that's why I usually recommend anywhere between seven to 10 chapters in your book. Each book, uh, each chapter will be about 1,200 to 1,800 words per chapter. Okay, uh, that would hit you right around 100, 125 pages. Okay. So you you find that that that's that's the kind of the best area for your yes. for your big book building, and you've you've found that out over the uh, the five books that you've yeah. you've put out. Yeah. I find more people will read the book that is less than 120, actually, 
I have a, a couple books that's over 200 pages. And when I follow up on those, they're like, yeah, I haven't finished it yet. So uh, when it's within a certain thickness, there's a good chance that they'll actually read it. Okay. Now, if we went back and kind of brainstormed some more on the actual title and subtitle and kind of bounce more ideas, would you say that an hour will be more than enough to come and kind of finalize that? Yeah, I think, I think just kind of brainstorming with you and, and then just kind of bouncing ideas um, off of each other, it, um, you know, I, I guess an hour would be, would be good enough. Um, uh, once we, you know, kind of sat and developed a little bit more on that. Yeah. Okay. Good. So the next thing is the actual outline of the book. Uh, throughout the book, I usually recommend that you have a copyright page, a about the author page, a dedication page, a acknowledgments, table of contents, a book forward, an introduction. So the introduction is basically the story in which why you decide to write this book and why the book is gonna be beneficial to other people. That's usually about one or two pages. Okay. Then you have the meat of the content, which is the main book. And then final thoughts, which is a summary of everything that you've, you've kind of written and talked about. Any additional content and recommend, re, recommended reading. Okay. About the author is about a page, two pages. Dedication is maybe a paragraph. Uh, acknowledgements is usually about a paragraph as well. Then comes the main content, which is the, the, the meat of the entire book. So with regards to your book on cash flow and how to use real estate to become financial freedom, can you break that down into 10 steps if need be? Yeah, that's definitely doable. Okay. Now, what would this first two steps be? first two steps um well first step would be to assess where you are financially and assess who you would have uh access to um financial uh investment okay. friends and, family that okay. sort of thing and the second or is that the second you no know, the second step is to uh start looking at the market that you're in okay as far so, as real estate Okay, so as we keep on going, we'll probably get up to 10 steps where 10 step is congratulations, now you have your first property or you built your empire kind of thing. Now, if I ask you, can you talk or prepare a presentation of 12 to 15 minutes on the very first topic there? Oh, easily. Easily. How about the second topic? Second topic, yes, definitely. So if you could do that, and how long would it take you to prepare for one of those 15 minute conversations or presentations? Probably, um, well, let's just say two hours. Okay. So for two hours, you can prepare one, which means in 20 hours, you'll have all 10 ready for recording. Right? <clears throat> now, for, for those of you who are struggling with actual content and, and are trying to think of how do I fill in that space? Well, let's say if we were talking about understanding the market. Are you able to break that portion into five to seven points? Yeah. And then each point, can you talk two to three minutes per point? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then that would be about 10 to 15 minutes, right? So for, for those who are struggling to kind of come up with how do I build that content, that's the process I go through. I would ask these questions, breaking it down. How many points can I talk about? How many case studies do I have? How many examples do I have? How many stories can I share? for each chapter or main topic, and I build it up from there. Now, for those who are struggling with, I still need more content, well, you could always have a highlights page at the end of each chapter, or a summaries page, or one page of just a quote that summarizes that chapter to beef up your page numbers. So that's how, how you can do that. So, Going through the outline, if we spent more time on it, I think we could probably spend one hour and have a pretty good solid outline for you to work on. Then the next process is to get your words on screen, mm -hmm. right? So whether you're preparing it as an outline or actually sitting down and typing it out, all we're worried about at this moment is getting words on screen. 
Don't worry about editing. Don't worry about grammar. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Just get it onto your screen. Now, I do recommend that you format your pages so that you already have a book format with the right margins and all that kind of stuff. So when I first started, I literally took a book and I took a ruler and measured out all the, all the margins and I set it up that way and then I started writing. That gives me a rough estimate as to how long my book is and all that kind of stuff. Then the famous writer's block comes in and people go, well, what if I'm stuck? Well, for that, I would ask the question, do you ever have speaker's block? Right? If I ask you a question on, okay, when it comes to the market, what's the first thing that you need to do? After a, a couple of seconds of thinking, you'll probably be able to speak about it. Right? If I put you on the spot, you'll be able to speak about it. Because us as humans, when we're put on the spot to speak, we'll be able to speak, even though if there's some ahs and ums and whatnot. But for some reason, when we're sitting down and typing, we go, oh no, we have writer's block. So to combat that, Imagine an avatar, imagine somebody sitting across from you. Every time you're stuck, imagine that person asking you that question about that topic and then just answer. Write as if you were speaking because you want this book to be in your voice. Okay. Now, if you're able to speak the 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is, an average person speaks about 125 words per minute, which means 10 to 15 minutes equals your 1,200 to 800 words per chapter which means in 20 hours, you have your book draft completely done, right? Now, usually what I recommend is then you take your transcription. If you put into a transcription service, you take your transcription and you mold it back and format it back and do some of your own self-editing. For me, on average, it takes about two hours per chapter when I already have the transcription. So if it took you two hours plus another two hours, that's four hours per chapter, that's 40 hours total. Okay. If I was to sit and just purely write per chapter, it's about four hours. So again, four times 10, 40 hours. Okay. Now, if it comes to uh, some credibility and also some lead gen, I also recommend putting some bonuses throughout your book. So if I ask you, is there anything free that you could give away, like a free template or a FAQ or a report that you could give away? Is there three or four things that you could include? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's, that's easy. Yeah. Okay. Which means by chapter three, you go, you can say something like, thank you for reading up to this point. Please go to my website and you can download this bonus. Right. So again, cool. getting people to go to your website. So I kind of gone through that process and go, and you kind of agreed that within 40 hours, you could probably get a good book draft done spread out over about six weeks. So about an hour, uh, hour a day or less. So the next thing is editing. Now, after you're done your draft and you're done uh, molding your, your transcription and all kinds of stuff, I usually recommend that you spend a good week, about seven hours. Uh, so on average, seven hours, one day, a, one hour a day throughout a week to read through your, your draft and edit whatever you can edit prior to sending it off to an editor, okay? So then that's about seven hours of your time. Once you get that done, you send it to an editor. It usually takes an editor two weeks per round, and then they'll send you back their edits and all that kind of stuff. I usually tell my editor to only look at grammar and flow and to keep my voice. I don't need them to go and rearrange stuff. I don't need them to, to add more information. I just want them to make sure that it reads well and it's grammatically good and the quality is still there. Now for editing, it could be free. If you have friends that could edit for you, um, it could be uh, delegated over to uh, outsourcing. Uh, it could be bartered. You could talk to Matt. I'm sure he has somebody that can, he can recommend. <laughs> Uh, but personally, I think anywhere between three to five hundred dollars is reasonable for an editor, and this and editors could go all the way up to thousands. Right? Is there is there a difference if you're if you're going up in price of that you found like between um, five and say? They'll thousand? be spending more time on on helping you rearrange. Um, I wouldn't spend up to a thousand because it's not the type of book I'm writing. Okay. If I'm looking at from only a credibility tool, then I'm going to keep it at three to 500, 
right? If they have to go through a second round, then you're closer to the 500 range. But if it's only one round of editing, it's about 250 to 300. And so are you, after the, sorry, for the most part, when you're writing your book, are you uh, getting it transcribed then? Or are you physically writing it? I've done it both. So yeah, if I'm but... physically writing it uh, from scratch, it takes me about four hours. Okay. If I'm doing it from a transcription to mold it into a readable content, that's about two hours per chapter. Now, do you find that there's more editing to be done if, if there's, you've gone through a transcription rather than uh, of the I, writing process? I find transcriptions easier because mentally for me, seeing it filled on the page makes me feel like, ooh, I got most of it done. I just need to mold it rather than seeing a blank page and going, I need to fill the whole page. So for me, it's easier from a transcription. Transcription, okay. Other people go, well, I speak in a way that is all over the place. Then it requires more editing on their side before they send it to an editor, right? So it works differently for different people. So if you're using a transcriber, using Grammarly and then sending it out to the editor? Uh, I send it to, well, I have Grammarly that takes care of a lot of my edits. And then I yep. send it to um, otter.ai, which would then give me a whole transcription. Okay. Okay. The next thing. So at this moment, you're no longer writing. You've already sent it off to your editor. And at this time, you're also going to send your, your sketches and your ideas to your, uh, to your person that's doing your cover. Uh, what am I doing? Give me one moment. So what I recommend is you probably come up with some ideas as to what your, your cover is gonna look like. And then you send those ideas or you could kind of research on other people's books and see what you like and send those ideas to your designer and go, this is what I like. This is what my, the feel of the book's gonna be. Can you design something for it? Um, I usually recommend your, your title, you have a little starburst. Can everybody see my background right now? Okay, so then you have your, here's five bonuses that's included. Here's your subtitle, an image, and then the person to do your forward and also your name. Um, on the back cover, you have two or three sentences as to why people should get your book, what are they gonna learn. You have testimonials about the author and you have room for the ISBN, barcode, and then some contact information, okay? So we'll go into the testimonials and forwards next. Um, but then with regards to the, the photo, I also recommend getting a photo done. And with regards to the cover, um, again, it could be free if you know somebody who can design covers for you. And then also, again, you could barter. And I wouldn't pay anything more than five, $600 for a cover, okay? Uh, for a custom cover, it's usually about 500 bucks. Something more generic and simple could be as, as cheap as 100. Now you could do it for free on, on Canva. There's some, some templates there that you can use, or you could always negotiate with a friend and go, hey, I'll promote your company and all that kind of stuff and promote your services if you do my cover. Any questions on the cover? Okay, so when I was talking about the editing and stuff, that's about seven hours of your own time and then after that maybe an hour of coming up with your idea before you send it off to your your designer so this period of time of editing and also coming up with content for your cover that's maybe 10 hours uh, total and then also about four weeks in between from somebody starting your editing process to ending your process of editing uh, for somebody to start and end your cover that's about four weeks Next thing is testimonials and forwards. Um, this is something I recommend people to think about at the very beginning stages so that if you need to build a relationship or rapport with somebody, this is the time to do it. You don't want to go, okay, I need to get my book out next week. Hey, would you like to do my forward? Right? That's not, uh, that's not very nice. <laughs> so think of the people that you want that would give you the best credibility for your book. So if I asked you right now, who would be two or three people that you think would be the best for a real estate book, who would you, re who would you reach out to, right? Um, for instance, like, like if you could reach Kiyosaki or if you could reach Don Campbell, 
those would be people that people recognize. They go, wow, they did the forward to your book. They'll go, wow, this person has credibility. So the higher the credibility person that you can find, the better. Um, if you can't find those people, the higher the title of the credibility will be good too, right? So how do I do those? Usually I would write a one page summary of my book so that if the person doesn't wanna spend time reading the full book and usually if they're in high in status, they don't wanna spend that time, then you give them a summary and then also pre-write the forward for them so that they can go, hey, I'm just gonna use this. You can put my name on it or they modify it as they see fit. How to write that forward? Uh, usually it's about two pages in a book. The first two paragraphs is basically, how did you meet this person? Uh, why did they catch your attention? And you're writing it from their point of view. And then also how did that relationship build? After, why did they say yes to writing the forward? And then what people are gonna learn from reading your book. Okay, uh, so an example of that, recently I, I got a uh, Frank McKinley, who is a real estate investor. He sells homes that are worth $15 million. And he was a keynote speaker last year at an event that I knew uh, that I was at. And from the, after the point that we met at that event, I found him on social media, liked all this stuff on Facebook, promoted his book, promoted all the stuff that he did. And I asked, hey, would you like to be on my podcast? And he said, yes, promoted his book some more. And then finally go, hey, would you like to do my forward? And he said, yes. So there's a period of time of building that relationship and rapport before you ask people of that kind of credibility to be your forward. Uh, same thing with testimonials. So what I would do there is write six to 10 different testimonials, two to three sentences long, which you can send off to 10 people and go, would you like to do... Uh, you could pick one of these testimonials or write one as you like. Then you could, out of those 10, you pick your favorite four that you would then put on the back of your book. Now, the more diverse of the people, that, the, the, the better. So if you have multiple countries, uh, multiple prof professions that can vouch for you, um, but also if they're also in the real estate realm that will give you more credibility, the better. So again, that will be combined with the editing phase uh, when you're doing your cover and all kind of stuff. Again, with, it's within the four weeks time frame that you will get all this stuff done. Uh, next up is your website. Now, website-wise, it's not required. You don't have to have it. But when you have a website where it's yourbook.com, it gives you that extra sense of credibility for people that are searching your book. So for the website, what I recommend is above the scroll, which is this part here, is the first thing they'll see. Anything below this point is going to be below the scroll. So you want to have an image of your book, your book title, some highlights as to what your book's going to show them, and a buy now button. After that is all your credibility stuff, your, your media logos, anything that's going to give you credibility. Uh, photos of other stuff that gives you credibility, and then you're about the author. Any questions about the website? Okay, so with regards to the website, I wouldn't pay more than 100 bucks, 150 for one landing page kind of thing. Uh, or you could talk to Matt. I'm sure he has somebody who could send you. I I'm picking on Matt because he's a one person I see all the time on the top of my screen. <clears throat> so then comes the book launch. So when you do your book launch, basically after the four weeks and your editing is completely done, you convert your book into an ebook format, which is basically a PDF. Okay. So you go to kdp.com, which is the Amazon self-publishing platform, and it's all completely free. You load up your PDF, include your cover on it, and now you can sell that ebook online. Um, I recommend pricing that ebook at $15 to $20, uh, a price that people normally would not pay for an ebook. Okay. Uh, now, when you download this from uh, based on your PDF that goes up, usually it's going to be a little bit off center or it's not perfectly format on your Kindle or when you look at it on your phone. You could pay anywhere between $150 to $200 for it to be formatted for an ebook format. Uh, personally, for me, I wouldn't pay it. 
because my strategy at the end is for people not to buy the ebook. Okay. After my ebook launch, I don't expect anybody to buy the ebook. So the ebook launch is purely for a bestseller campaign. Now, I'm sure people have noticed that realtors say that the best realtor, number one realtor in this area and number one realtor in this area. And that's because as you reduce the category into a certain timeline, certain area, then you could be number one in something. So the strategy here is you put your book into a category that's fitting for you. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting a real estate book into let's say Scientology because that's not congruent, but um, you could get bestseller pretty easily in Scientology. But anyway, so once you find that uh, category, you put it into that category, you could pick two or three categories, and then you select a date that you believe you could get the most amount of people to buy your book at that day. So for me, I find that Fridays between 11 to one o'clock is the best because people are getting ready for lunch or coming back from lunch and they have some time to jump online to buy a book. At that time, I reduce my book price from $15 down to a dollar for an ebook, and I'm going to push all my sales to that one period of time. Amazon has an algorithm that tracks every so, so many hours. And then if you have uh, maximized the sales during that period of time, then you will get that seller at that time. Once you see bestseller, you take a screenshot and now you're a bestseller and you can say you're a bestseller for life. Normally, I would say if you could hit 75 to 100 people buying your book, then you'll probably hit it. Okay. Uh, so what I usually do is the Friday before I'll make an announcement that, hey, starting next Monday, I'm going to have a video series. Tune into this video series. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I would have the video series go up at 11 o'clock, which is the same time every single day. And I'll be talking about topics in the book. And then by Thursday, I go, for all of you, thank you very much for following my series. Tomorrow, I'm going to be launching my ebook. And as a big thank you to all of you, I'm reducing the price of this ebook to a dollar. Please support and buy this book for a dollar. On Wednesday night and Thursday night and Friday morning, I'm going to be mass messaging, texting, emailing, calling whoever I know and reminding them to buy my book at that specific time for a dollar. And I'm going to warn you, the people who don't listen to your directions are usually your family and friends. They'll see it for a dollar at eight o'clock in the morning. Oh, hey, it's already a dollar. Can I buy it? And they bought it and that sale will not go, go towards your, your account. So there's a lot of coaching involved and there's a lot of frustrations, but at the end, you'll most likely reach it if you sell between 75 to about 100 books. Next thing after that is your, da -da -da. so that takes about a week, five hours of time to come up with all your content and your video promotions. Uh, once you get your bestseller, you update your cover to say bestseller on your cover and you're ready to send this over to print. So once you send it to print, you want to order a proof copy. Uh, the proof copy is going to come in about two weeks. You review your copy. And then if you're happy with it, you could go, hey, I'm good. I can launch my paperback copy book now and you're good to go. This is your last chance to make any changes. If you want to send it for a second proof, that's good. That's another two, three weeks before it comes in. And then when you order about, let's say, 50 to 100 books to come to your place, on average, it's about four to five dollars per book cost. Okay, And then basically you wait. And you wait for you wait for this moment when the books come into your house. It's one of the best moments that you will ever feel because you go, wow, it's actually done. And you can't wait to to show it off and tell people about it and sign copies and all that kind of stuff. And that moment came to me when I was at a conference and people lined up to get my my autograph on a book, which is a, a wonderful feeling to be able to add that add, add to to add value to other people. So now the thing is you don't have to have all these books in your basement because if people buy your book on Amazon, what happens is uh, it gets bought, it gets printed and shipped to their house. It doesn't even go through you. Uh, so yeah, that process takes about five weeks to get it done. 
So some other ways to boost your credibility is after you finish writing a book, you could hire someone to write you a press release. A press release could cost anywhere between 200 to thousands, right? So 200 bucks, you could get somebody to write a press release, send it to your local medias and all that kind of stuff and hope that it gets picked up. Uh, if it gets picked up, then you can use all those media logos on your websites and in your, in your branding and your marketing. Uh, what something else that you can do is use the paper book launch and tie it to a charity, bring in speakers, have free giveaways, do book signings. Um, I have one client that actually wrote a press release and then went to different chapters to do book signings at each chapters. In fact, every time she went to LA or San Diego, she'll call up that Indigo and go, can I do a book signing? So then she can say, hey, I'm international. I'm all over the place. I could do book signings everywhere. Again, boosting up credibility. Once a couple strategies to get your book paid for before you even write a word is you can sell advertising at the back of your book. So for a real estate book, you could approach your, your lawyer or your property manager and go, hey, I'm writing a property uh, ma uh, uh, cash flow book or a real estate book, and we're gonna be talking about how you need to find a lawyer. Would you like to be the lawyer of choice and have your, your advertising at the back? You can sell half a page for 500 up to $1,000 per page if you choose to. Right? This is also an opportunity for you to go, hey, if you want to do my, uh, my book cover, we'll put an advertising in the back of the book for free. Right? Another great way is to do pre-selling. So you could be a best-selling author before you even write your first word. As long as you promise to have that book out in X amount of time, and I guarantee you it's a great motivator. So having said all of that, the next thing is uh, when you're in your field of work, uh, I'm sure you understand the importance of having a YouTube channel, uh, podcast, some social media stuff, an ebook, some lead gen. Well, guess what? You've already said that you could do 10 videos easy. Well, those 10 videos can now be, can now be separated into 10 separate episodes for your YouTube channel released every single Monday. Then you could take those 10 episodes and just extract the audio. And now you have a podcast that goes out every Wednesday, right? Two different mediums, same content. But for both episodes, you could promote it with social media with three or four posts with three or four different clips that promotes both of these. Now you have content for your social media and Instagram, whatever you like. Your ebook can also become your lead gen in your, in, your, in your website. So if you want more information and also a best-selling ebook, put down your content, uh, contact information and we'll send you a free ebook to get you more leads. Well, those 10 chapters that you wrote can now also be a 10 series episode for your live blog that goes up to your website every single week. After 10 weeks, now you build up that momentum, you built up that following then you can add as you, as you see fit. So that's how I could use this and repurpose everything all with just a book. So how does that sound? Does that sound all possible? Yeah, it definitely sounds doable. Um, so Fong, do you, do you uh, assist people through the entire process on that? Yeah, if that's what they choose to do, uh, that's definitely something I could help out with. Okay. So we've kind of gone over this whole thing and we said in two hours, we could probably come up with our title and outline 40 hours. We could probably finish off our draft another 10 hours and four weeks. We could come up with our cover, our website testimonials and forwards another five hours for our bestseller strategy, five weeks to go through our printing and proofing and, and getting our books in hand, which comes out to a total of 60 hours over 16 weeks. So in four months, you can become a best-selling author. Any questions with that? No? Okay. So as, uh, as Paul said, do I help people uh, going through this process? Uh, yes, I do. Um, my, my goal for today is to make sure that I've given every single detail that I can within this period of time to have everybody set 
and ready to go to get their books done on their own. Um, but there are people who would like my help and like me to kind of hold their hand all throughout the day, uh, throughout the process. And there's, there's four options for people to work with me. Um, option one is basically something similar to what we saw here, where I go through everything with you. I go through your plan. I come up with your idea. We'll brainstorm the, the titles, the subtitles, the outline, get everything set so that you could just go off on your way and follow that outline, follow the plan, and you could get your book done on your own time. Uh, the next option is everything included in number one, where I go through all that plan, have that plan in place. And then on a separate occasion with six other people, it's going to be group coaching where you could come in full accountability with everybody else. I'll also provide you my template. So all you need to do is replace my content with your content. Uh, if you choose to, I could be one of your forward or your testimonial. I'll do a book interview with you at the end to promote your book at the end. And then also you have a scheduled milestone as to in the next four months, what do you need to get done in order for you to get your book in hand in four months? Um, there's also unlimited support that's reasonable within the next four months where you could con uh, contact me, call me, email me, whatever you need. And also you get a copy of my best-selling book on communications, public speaking, and connecting. Option two is exactly the same as op option three is the same thing as option two, except it's one-on-one -on -one with me and it's not in a group. And then option four is where I work with you um, fully throughout the year. And then you also will work on your, your podcast, we'll work on your video content, we'll work on all the online stuff. Um, I'll also take care of your editing, take care of your formatting, take care of your cover design and everything's done for you. And then other than you having to write the draft and getting that ready to go, um, that's it. So that's an additional 12 hours of coaching and one-on-one -on -one time with me. So everything included in option three is in option four as well. So those are the four ways that you could work with me to get your books done, if that's what you choose to do. And uh, to find more information on that, that's the website to go to. And if Mish could add that to the chat, that'd be great. And at this time, I think we have like nine minutes, eight minutes, if anybody has any questions. Mitch, are you there? I'm here, my brother. Yeah, is there anything in the chats? I've got nothing in the chat here right now. Uh, a quick comment. Uh, Lorette joined us, said she's going to be coming back to watch a little more later. Love this up until now. And just to let you know, our peak live audience, while we've been we'll kicking it on YouTube, is hitting in, the, hitting in the high 30s, low 40s, high 50s, and they've been sticking with us almost the entire time. So we've had a lovely little live audience coming with us right now. And that'll pick up later on as people keep coming back and watching too. So I think you, <laughs> Shari just put it perfectly, jam-packed. I'm going <laughs> to guess that it's a little bit of not even analysis paralysis, just drinking from a fire hose. Great. Happy to hear that. Paul, any questions from you directly? And uh, when, do you really, uh, when are you looking at, at starting, um, I guess, your next round of coaching for, for your book series in in helping people and, you know, helping someone. I can start as early as uh, in about a week and a half from now. A week and a half, okay. Yeah. Uh, depending on what option you pick, like for instance, the group stuff, um, I usually like to go through all six people. So I want to keep my groups within only six people so that uh, everybody gets quality time in the group sessions. And before we get into the group, I still need to go through the one hour with each person before we put the group together. So as early as possible, I'll get those all done. And then once everybody is scheduled, then I can start having that group sessions uh, sorted out. Um, all the one-on-ones, I can start anytime. Okay. So with your group sessions, are they, are they usually in the evenings or afternoons? How does, how does your group sessions usually work? With that, it will depend on the group. So uh, I'll find a happy medium between all six people and we'll schedule it that way. Paul, to help you and to help everybody that's joined us live as well. And right now, so in our chat on Zoom here, you'll see the link with a whole bunch of fingers pointed down to be able to join Fong on his website. On YouTube, live right in the comments as well. That's been added too, so people have access to that right away. If you're following along live on YouTube, please don't hesitate to click on that and talk to our man Fong because he's an absolute genius for those that joined us today live, of course. Have a look. And of course, since most of the people on the call in our live tiny studio audience 
our members of syndicate, book your one-to-one -one with this man. It's going to revolutionize how you're thinking about what you do and the way you present yourself in your business in just 30 to 60 minutes. So booking a one-to-one -one alone is going to yield an incredible amount of value before you decide, should I pay them? Well, we're in business. Of course, you should pay somebody for their hard work. But at least the one-to-one -one is going to give you a great deal of perspective and help for yourself. Fong, I think we're at about that time today, my friend. First of all, revelatory, which was to be expected. And thank you so much for bringing it quite like that. Paul, for coming along and playing right hand to him as well. And to, and to dive all and be able to do that. That's exposure to the nth degree. And it's wonderful to see such absolute willingness to be able to put yourself in a spot where vulnerably, you're an expert in your industry, yet you allowed an expert in his industry for Fong to be able to sit there and provide guidance and suggestions and to walk you through. And that's incredibly potent and powerful for, well, if I can, everybody watching live and everybody that sees this in the future to be able to wrap their mind around the fact that it's okay to admit you don't know, to find the resources you need and to do something which everybody has thought about at least one time and to get your name on the front cover of a book. What an extraordinary. Fong, thank you for sharing this gift and thank you for bringing it into a Syndicate Talk Season 2. And on behalf of Fong, Paul, our live studio audience here, for the live audience on YouTube, thank you for joining us inside of Season 2 of a Syndicate Talks. Unlock the book inside of you. It has been an extraordinary journey for the last 58 minutes to be able to share this with you. Continue to watch it. Come and find us on YouTube. Find Fong at fongchua.com. And of course, do something different today and tomorrow and life will be different in 365 days. That's what today was about. Take something that you've always wanted, always needed, didn't know how to do it and learn how to do it. And that's what we do here by bringing the finest education in life and business to you free of charge to make your life and your business a little better. Thank you for joining us, Fong. Thank you for presenting and sharing today. I look forward to seeing you at our next Syndicate Talks. And of course, check us out on YouTube at Mitch Cavage Official. You'll find the Syndicate Talks playlist, season one, season two, et cetera. Join us, check out our other, other episodes and watch for, of course, a Syndicate Talks season one's book to come out right away. Season two, starring our boy Fong, will be coming out here in the next couple of months too. You can enjoy those as well. Have a fantastic day. Do what you got to do. And of course, join us here again next time. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I learned uh, a lot. It was like drinking through a fire hose there. So. <laughs>